there they are welcome everybody back to homemade ben's here with you tonight we're gonna make amazing chicken pineapple curry with our new bffs at harry and david we'll talk about them in a second but first just welcome to all of you all thank you for coming in are you all excited for some curry tonight pineapple curry i like it, right everyone if anyone's a little weirded out by this i'm just gonna get it out of the way right now if you're fine with pineapple on pizza, be fine with pineapple and curry. It's going to be absolutely, absolutely delicious. This curry, I'm going to tell you, I am wicked excited about it for a couple of reasons. One, because it's delicious. But two, we get to do our first class ever with an amazing company. Some of our favorite people we've worked with in a long time, Harry and David. They partner with us and we're going to be cooking tonight with their amazing navel oranges. These guys are like the perfect balance of kind of like a little bit tangy, a little bit sweet, very easy to peel. You can bake with them, cook with them. Um, we're going to be using them in a savory application tonight. I want to go over kind of the ingredients first just to make sure that you all have everything that you need so we can get ready and have this curry party kind of get started, all right? So let me switch first here to the little top down. Just look how beautiful those are, by the way. Um, we've got everything we have here for our curry. So we've got some boneless, skinless chicken thighs. We're gonna be putting a little bit of salt and pepper on these and searing these off to start making our curry. Um, so you can just have them in a bowl or a plate big enough that after you brown them and sear them, you're going to be able to take them back out and kind of set them aside while we build the rest of the curry. Couple of carrots, one nice onion, couple cloves of garlic, two or three. Nice big kind of thumb size knob of ginger. And then we've got a bunch of spices here for our curry. So we've got two teaspoons of turmeric, two teaspoons of ground coriander, two teaspoons of ground cumin, little pinch of cinnamon, and then the cayenne is up to you. Quarter teaspoon to one teaspoon. If anyone can tell, this ain't no quarter teaspoon here. We're whole hog on the spicy curry today, but it's up to you. You can control it how you want. Um, but I went with the full teaspoon. We've got one 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes. You could use crushed tomatoes if you wanted to as well. You can even take whole tomatoes, just kind of get your aggression out, squeeze them out, juice them up. And then we've got a little bit of broth. So you could use chicken or vegetable here. Either one's totally fine, but I've got chicken, a low sodium uh, chicken broth, about one and a half cups. We're going to need basically about like cup, cup and a half of, of our pineapple. And then we've got a small handful of our uh, sugar snap peas and a little bit of cilantro for garnish. So the other stuff for the salad, that's enough to go over for right now. The other stuff for the salad we'll talk about when we get there. I don't want your countertop like loaded with stuff. People are asking any substitutes for chicken in the curry. Um, my first inclination, honestly, would be, and you'd put it in later, you wouldn't sear it and you wouldn't have to cook it nearly as long, but this would be delicious with a really nice firm white fish, like a cod or a halibut or something like that. Um, you could also uh, do vegetables. So if you just wanted to load up with like mushrooms, I think would be really, really delicious in this, a little bit of extra green beans and stuff. My first in inclination is gonna go towards like seafood, maybe shrimp, white fish, something like that would be delicious in this. The sweetness would pair well with the sweetness of the, of the, um, the pineapple. All right, y'all, so I promise, I know this isn't like me. Usually I go over everything, but I wanna get this curry cooking because it's gonna take about 30 minutes or so, like once we get the chicken in there to really, really get where we want it to be. So we'll talk about the salad later, but let's get started on our curry. So I want you all to grab a nice big pan. Um, something that's a little wider would be nice because as we're braising, we want a little bit of the chicken to kind of be like down in the curry, a little bit to be out, so we still have the nice browning on the top. So a little bit of a wider pan is nice, but something that's going to be big enough that you're going to be able to, to hold all of the ingredients that are going in. Now, first step to making a delicious flavored like stew or braise or anything, especially when we're using meat, is we're going to sear that off first and start getting that fond on the bottom of the pan, all those little brown bits. So I want you to turn whatever pan you're using on to a relatively high heat, like a seven or an eight out of 10, because I want to emphasize this and I'll probably say it again, not that I ever repeat myself. Um, I'll probably say it again, we're not going to be cooking this through. All right, I don't care if this chicken is cooked. It's gonna braise in the curry later. All I care about is color, all right? So gorgeous orange oranges, gorgeous brown chicken. Color is the theme of the night here, all right, y'all? So hot pan, put a little bit of oil in, maybe just like a tablespoon or two of whatever high heat oil you like, olive oil, avocado, something like that. And I just want you to take your chicken thighs and we're gonna season them with a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'll be honest with you, it doesn't really matter exactly where it goes because 
everything's gonna meld together in the curry as we go. And if you have a bowl like this, we can just kind of toss it in the bowl and make sure everything is, there's no pepper in that, that's great. Should have checked my station, y'all. Let's try this again. Ready? Pepper. Bam. Pepper. A uh, little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and just give them a toss around. And the only thing I ask is, now if you're using your boneless, skinless chicken thighs, is we want to think about like what side you're going to serve up. Like what's going to be the presentation side? And it's always going to be the smoother top side of like your chicken thigh or your chicken breast. So we're going to make sure that that is the side that goes down in the pan first to get nicely browned and nicely colored. If we're only gonna get really great color on one side, it's gonna be that really that really smooth, pretty top side. So when you put that in the pan, y'all, I said this before, I'll say it again. We want some action. I want some sizzle. I want some noise. So if you don't hear that, take your chicken back out of the pan, turn the heat up a little bit, and then put your chicken back in. The second it goes into the pan, we should have some nice, some nice noise, some nice action going on, okay? So again, save your bowl or save your plate or something because we're gonna take that chicken out after it gets colored nicely, just set it aside while we build the rest of our curry. It's okay that it's a raw chicken bowl, I promise, because again, everything's gonna get cooked through as we, as we go. All right, y'all, so we're gonna start cutting up our veggies and just getting all of that ready as, we, as we're browning our, our chicken, all right? So, Carrots, I've actually, these are pretty big carrots. I might just use one carrot tonight. Um, peeling it, up to you, optional. If you don't want to peel them, you can just wash them and dry them really, really well, get all the dirt off. Um, I kind of want them to be a little bit prettier tonight, so I'm going to peel mine. I don't usually do that, but um, I just want them to look really nice, really fancy. This feels like working with Harry and David, it feels like a special occasion, right? Like you get a gift basket, that's a special occasion. It's like it's something to celebrate, so I feel like I want to make really beautiful special occasion carrots. So I'm gonna peel mine, and then we're just gonna do like a small dice on them. So carrots are one of those tricky things, you know, they're tapered, you know? So like, they're not exactly the same size. Like they're a little bit thinner at the bottom than they are at the top. And then if you're not careful and you don't think about that when you're cutting them, all of a sudden you got big pieces of carrots, small pieces of carrots, they don't cook the same. So however you cut your carrot up in a small dice, you just wanna really make sure that it is going to be the same size. So, like when you're doing your carrots, I usually take the top and the bottom off, and then I'll cut mine in half. And so I've got a little bit of about half of a carrot here that's like the thicker part, and then down here I've got the bottom part. And the reason why I do that, and if you wanted to be all like culinary school and do a perfect dice, we could, but we're not gonna do that today. But like the bottom part, since it's a little more tapered, a little thinner, I might just cut it in half, and then do like little quarter inch quarter inch half moons, like things like that, right? But the top part, since it is a little bit thicker, you might decide that like it, you cut it in half and then you quarter them. And that way they're gonna match the sizes of these ones a little bit better. Every once in a while you get like one of those really skinny carrots that's the exact same size, but uh, usually not. Perfect. So we can do that and just kind of set them, set them aside. Now, while we're doing on that, I don't want to forget about our chicken. So every once in a while, take a little peek. Now I'm going to show you this because I want to show you where we're not quite ready yet, just so you can see. If we look at like this, it looks nicely browned, but every time you braise something, the color will lighten up as you're braising it. So I wanna go for a really dark color on my chicken. So I'm gonna flip it over and actually give it just another minute or two. Really nice dark color, that's what we want, y'all. That gives us time to cut up our, our onion. So I've just got like a little white onion here. We're gonna cut it in half, peel it, and again, just kinda of do a small dice that matches the size of, the size of our carrots. Oh, y'all. All right, so check this out. This is what I'm talking about more. Really nice golden brown color. That's more what we want, okay? So this is gonna take different amount of time for, for different folks depending on, on your chicken and your pan and everything. So if yours isn't that color yet, those darker pieces, leave it for a few minutes. As soon as it is, flip it over, 
we're going to get a little bit more color on the other side, and then we're going to transfer it out to our bowl. Okay. And while we're doing that, I'm just going to finish up my, my onions and my carrots. All right, y'all. So I took my chicken out. I turned the temperature on my pan down. If I check out the top down, I see this is it. That's the flavor, y'all. This is what we were looking at. Our fawns. Mm, that's a make or break moment right there with our curry. Okay. So if you need to, you can add a little bit more oil to your pan once you have that. And then I'm going to transfer over my carrots and my onions because those are going to take a little bit more time to cook than the garlic and the ginger that we're going to add next. And we turn the pan down because we just don't need that same high heat to cook our vegetables and kind of soften them and sweat them down as we do, you know, the CR chicken, right? So we're turning the heat down just a, just a touch. I'm going to put just a little pinch of salt in, not a lot because we had a pretty good amount of salt on our chicken, but just a little bit. So will also help keep the onions from browning as much. And then we're going to chop up our garlic and our, and our ginger. Now this is kind of a divisive thing. I feel like everyone has their own way of doing garlic and ginger. Like for me, it goes back to that OCD stuff. I just like having a little bit of control over it. So you all have probably seen this before, but if you haven't, I'm a big fan of cutting your garlic just like you do your onion. I put like a little slice in it. Then I'll do a couple cuts the other way to basically make like a little grid work at the end of my garlic. And then it gives me these perfect little minced pieces. And I keep all that beautiful like sugar and garlic oil and stuff in there. But whatever way you want to do it works for you. And as soon as you get your garlic cut up, you can put it right into your pan with your, your onions and your carrots. Someone's asking about microplane, this little guy, just a little grater, um, you know, little kind of fine tooth grater. You can use it for citrus zest. You can use it for, uh, for Parmesan cheese, for garlic, for ginger, all that kind of stuff. So if you ever want to use it for grating your ginger or your garlic, you just got to watch out for your fingers, but it'll give you just this really fine result on the bottom side. So a lot of people like using these for ginger and garlic for sure. But this is one, that's one of those things like chef tool. This is one of those. You really, really should have it. A good, uh, good microplane. It's just so versatile for so many different things. And the nice thing about using this is it releases kind of how the opposite I said with the garlic. I said, I like cutting garlic my way because it keeps all the sugars and oils in it. This is the opposite. It's going to release all of those sugars and all the, all the aroma and the flavor from the ginger. And so the second it hits this hot pan, it just starts perfuming the whole, really the whole, I was gonna say a whole dish, your whole kitchen, y'all. Like the whole kitchen just starts smelling like ginger. All right, so that is looking beautiful. So next step, y'all, as we're building the flavors up here, this curry is gonna be our spices. We wanna toast these a little bit. Fresh spices are always great, but ground spices are good too. And you can kinda, it's not cheating, I was gonna say cheat, but you can, uh, you can take it to the next level by taking a minute and just toasting it in the bottom of your pan. Now you gotta be careful because it'll burn quickly. And if you need to, you could always add a tiny bit more oil. But if you just take a minute or two, even with your, your ground spices, that chili powder, it's getting me. Hold on. All right. Um, just take a minute or two just to toast them. And you just, the aroma is like, it's night and day difference. So it's really gonna make that curry even more flavorful and even more aromatic. Super, super, super important step. Um, Y'all, I'm just gonna show you really quick, now that the spices have kind of toasted and they just smelled amazing, I'm just adding in the chicken broth and adding in the crushed tomatoes. And this is a step I don't want you to miss. Give that bottom of your pan just like a little scrape. Any of that fawns and those toasty bits from cooking the chicken or from, um, <coughs> wow, I'm coughing on the spices again, or from uh, cooking down the spices, you just wanna get that released from the bottom of the pan and make sure that you get it mixed into the entire broth. And as soon as you do that, you can take your little delicious crispy chicken thighs and we can kind of nestle them in. And then we're gonna go into pineapple town and start cutting down a pineapple. Um, and I wanna point out, Chefs will judge you, so I'm telling you all now so you can remember this. This stuff 
don't waste it. There's chicken liquid. This goes into the pan. Don't forget about it, okay? So we're just going to let that simmer away for a second. All right, y'all, let's cut up our pineapple. So does anyone know the right way to pick a pineapple when you go to the grocery store? One is smell the bottom. It should smell very ripe, very aromatic. It should also look kind of, I'm going to be honest, it should look a little, a little kind of old, a little like it's had better days. It means it's had a chance to, to ripen, and it should smell, I'm not afraid to smell a pineapple in front of y'all. It should smell very pineapple-y. The other way is taking leaves out of the center and pulling them out. And they should pull out without very much pressure at all. If you have to put a pretty good amount of force to pull the leaf out, it's not ready to go. Leave it on the counter, ideally, and give it a few more days to like ripen up. Um, you guys nailed it. So easiest way to cut a pineapple, I'm going to take the top off. I save this for like a table centerpiece. Um, then you flip it over, take the bottom off. So you've got top and bottom removed. And then I'm actually, I'm probably just going to use half of this. So I'm going to save the other half. But then you just go around the outside. And I want you all to remember what I'm doing here right now, how I'm peeling this with my knife. Because when we grab those Harry and David navel oranges or honeywells, we're going to be doing the exact same thing to peel them and get those beautiful orange segments out. So you're just taking your knife and you're just kind of going around in a half circle and taking the outside off. Just like that. And if you have any like parts of the outside, you can kind of go back and, and sort of clean them off. But that's exactly what we're looking for. Beautiful, beautiful fresh pineapple. And the core we want to make sure we get rid of. So I like to just kind of cut mine into quarters, just like that. And then I'll stand it up and I'll just cut that core like right out. And we're just going to cut this into, um, into small chunks. Nothing too small because as it's going in the pineapple, into the, into the braise, we want it to soften but we don't want it to completely fall apart. We'd like it to be recognizable as pineapple. So I like leaving the chunks a little bit bigger. And we're gonna put in about a cup to a cup and a half. And as soon as that is in, we're gonna put our lid on, and we're gonna let this braise away basically until the, the end of class, maybe another like 15, 20 minutes. And we'll give it a taste, and we'll be ready to serve it with this amazing orange and ginger salad we're about to make. So pineapple's in. Just going to kind of give it like a little nestle just to make sure all my chicken is really happy and those pineapple pieces are going in. How beautiful does that look already? And then I'm going to put the lid on just so that it doesn't reduce down too much. It's going to seal in all the, all the liquid, all the moisture, all the steam. And we're just going to let that simmer away on a pretty low temperature. Like So I just put mine down to maybe like a 3 or 4 out of 10, something like that. Just so with the lid on, we've got really nice light bubbles. Um, all right, y'all. So let's talk about our salad really quick. So this salad, this is gorgeous, and I love it, and the pineapple is phenomenal. But the salad for me is a little bit of a star of the show. Um, you might have heard that adage that, like, sometimes when you go to, to restaurants and interview for jobs, like, these old French chefs and stuff will make people cook an egg or something, like make a French omelet to get a job. Uh, for me... I always would want to test the cook by, can you make a salad? If you can make a delicious salad, that to me shows nuance and textures and flavors and stuff. And this is going to be one of those salads that you all would get a job at the fanciest restaurant once you put this together. Because we are going to have tons of flavor. We've got our mixed greens or really whatever greens you want. We've got about three radishes, that beautiful, beautiful Harry and David navel orange, which again, it's going to be sweet, aromatic, it's got a little tang and tartness to it. Um, that's going to be a nice counter to these glorious deluxe mixed nuts. And as far as I'm concerned, you had me at pistachios. Um, so these has got like almonds, pistachios, cashews, pecans. We're going to chop, chop these up, give us a nice kind of like richness uh, and obviously nuttiness to that. So that's all going to balance together with the scallions. And then we're going to make this amazing dressing with a couple more scallions as well. Another orange, because this time we're going to be using the juice and the zest. Show you multiple ways to use it. We've got some coconut aminos. You could be using um, 
soy sauce if you wanted to as well, or tamari. A little bit of sweetener, so I'm using honey. Uh, agave would be really nice, or if you wanted to, a little bit of coconut sugar would be delightful. We've got a little bit of rice wine vinegar. We've got some sesame oil, a little bit of avocado oil, and then a little bit more ginger and a little bit more garlic. So we're gonna be making and blending this up into just this unbelievably aromatic, umami, bomb, spicy, like kind of sweet dressing, which is again, gonna go with all the flavors that are in our salad. You could use any greens that you wanted. I'm a huge fan of arugula. They hold up to dressing really well. You get a little bit of pepperiness from them. They're also really good for you. Um, another one, it doesn't get enough respect, but I love like a good butter lettuce, kind of for the, it's really kind of soft and tender, but you still get some Christmas, Christmas? Crispness. Um, Christmas, I had Harry and David's on the brain for gift giving. Um, crispness. So um, those would be my two choices, arugula or maybe butter lettuce, but um, really even just like, like little tender pieces of romaine would be really nice too. I just think you need to have a little bit of crispness, a little bit of body to it. All right, y'all, well, let's make the dressing first. So I'm gonna be using this little immersion blender, a little stick blender. Um, if you um, don't have one of these, you can use a regular blender. You could even just finely chop this stuff by hand and like mix it all up. Um, you know, so whatever you've got around to get these pieces together, the, this dressing together, the big thing here is that we just want the ginger and the garlic to not be super pronounced. So we want that in small pieces. So if you have that microplane still, if you guys have one of those, grating your ginger is a great way to go. If you're not blending it, if you are blending it, then honestly, just giving a really rough chop onto your ginger and your garlic, just like kind of smaller pieces that's gonna allow it to blend up pretty well is gonna to be totally fine. Doesn't have to be anything fancy or perfect. So that's what I'm gonna do since I'm blending mine up, just like really rough chop on my ginger and that's gonna go in. Same thing with my garlic and with my scallions as well. Are you all using your orange zest, your citrus zest? Okay, all right, good. I was having a heart attack. I didn't see a lot of reactions here. Y'all, this is one of the best parts of citrus is the zest. It's aromatic, it's got essential oils, it brings so much flavor, and a slightly different flavor than the juice or the actual segments themselves. Um, so we are gonna highlight these beautiful oranges by making sure that we're not just using the juice in this dressing, but we're also using the zest, okay? Big thing when you're zesting your citrus though is making sure that you don't get the white underneath the pith. You just want the beautiful colored part on the outside, like in this case, the orange on the orange. So I just kind of use my microplane and I just turn just like this. And you're moving it every kind of little scrape or so just to make sure you're not getting that white part. Now, if you don't have a microplane, you could use like a vegetable peeler and you could almost like, anyone ever see that with a bartender? They like take, take like peels, the peel off just the outside with a vegetable peeler before they make your cocktail. You can do that and just kind of chop it up into as small pieces as you can. But I am absolutely telling you, if this is not something you do, and these are glorious oranges, my Lord, um, the aroma that comes off of them when that essential oil gets released is unbelievable. So this is absolutely something you're going to want to be doing when you're using uh, any any citrus, but especially one that's a really high quality one like, like these ones. So I'm putting my zest in. I'm also going to be putting my juice in. And then we're going to follow right behind with uh, all the other parts of our dressing. And I think this dressing is one of these beautiful ones. If you like it a little bit more sweet, you can do a little bit more honey or a little bit more of the orange juice. Um, if you're more of like, a, you want a little bit more sharpness to it, put a little more ginger in. Like the ginger, you know, would be really, really beautiful to kind of kick off a notch if you wanted to. Oh, it smells so good. All right, so everybody else in, and then we're gonna blend this up and make our beautiful dressing. All right, so everything's in. I'm gonna take my little stick one there and just give it a little blend up, y'all. Um, and again, like if you wanted to do this all by hand and just like chop the stuff really fine beforehand, a little mini food processor would be great as well. Oh, those oranges. 
Wait, you guys think I'm joking? Maybe you don't. I am obsessed. My number one rule or trick for like putting flavor in food is herbs and acidity. And my favorite acidity is citrus. Like I have piles of orange and lemons and limes in my kitchen all the time. I grab them at. I made a pizza here yesterday for everyone and I finished the top of it with lemon zest. So get yourself some high quality citrus and start using it in your in your cooking, please. Um, so it's blended up nice and smooth. Um, we've still got a, a little bit of piece. You can see a little bit of the herbs, but it looks gorgeous. Going to give it a little taste. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's pretty darn good. I'm going to give it a little pinch of salt. I want those flavors just to come out a tiny, tiny bit more, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with mine. And that's pretty normal. Like depends on like, you know, coconut aminos, you're using the soy sauce, all that kind of stuff. You might have to put a little pinch of salt. How long will it keep if you somehow don't eat all of it? Most salad dressings that you make fresh at home are going to be something like, I'm going to tell you the, the real chefy answer is probably somewhere in the four to five day range. Um, that's going to be their peak. They're going to start going kind of a little wonky after that. They might not necessarily be bad for you, but the flavors are going to get a little off. Um, so that's my general rule if I'm making like a fresh dressing like this probably in the three to five day range. If you're making a vinaigrette, you can keep it probably twice as long and it's gonna be totally fine, but having everything else in here is gonna make it a little bit less. All right, so we've got uh, our beautiful dressing ready to go. You all wanna put together a salad. And I'll tell you, this is a serious chef thing. Like cooks come into kitchens and Heather's gonna nod her head afterwards. And they come in, they're like, I wanna be on the steak station. I wanna cook the hot stuff. I wanna do with fire. And then they go through everything and they go, you want to know where the most fun stuff is and like the most kind of like nuance and technique and learning how to make food delicious? It's cold food. It's a salad station. Um, so I love putting together a good salad. It's a great way to, to impress anybody. And the star of the show is going to be these guys. So we've got the Herring David Deluxe Mixed Nuts. Again, had me at pistachios. I love pistachios. Um, and then the navel oranges. So we're going to start with the, we're going to start with the nuts and just kind of give them a rough chop. I don't want them too small. So good. Um, I don't want, sorry, I got distracted. I don't want them too small because we want those like nice big pieces. Um, but we do want to give them a little rough chop just so that they'll actually kind of like fit on a, on a fork when you're, when you're eating it. So just look at those guys. Like look how gorgeous those are. Um, just a couple passes through of your knife just to get them broken down a little bit and it doesn't have to be perfect just has to be a little bit more manageable um, I totally recommend using about 25% more than you need because then you can put what you need into the recipe and then the rest of it you can eat yourself um, as you're finishing your dish you can just kind of like snack on it as you go so I'm gonna transfer these over I'm gonna grab myself my little chef snack I'm gonna cash you too um, and then we're going to cut up our radish and our scallion because I want to save the star of the show for last. Now the scallions, this is up to you. I always let you choose here at Homemade how you want to cut your scallions. You can do little rounds if you want, as thin or as big as you want, something like that. If you want this to be a little bit more celebratory because this is a special occasion you're gonna do the same cutting but you're gonna turn the scallions so it's like a 45 degree angle so rounds bias cut and then you're gonna do really really nice thin slices and it gives you these oblong kind of like gorgeous pieces it just looks nice gives you a little bit more surface area Whichever way you want to go though, it's still going to be a beautiful scallion and we're just going to use the, kind of the tender green parts, not so much the white parts. We'll save those for something else. So we're going to set those to the side. And your radishes, I want you to cut your radishes just into, into uh, rounds. You can leave nice big radishes, they're going to look really gorgeous on the salad. They just look nice on the top of the salad, they're going to look beautiful little jewels along with the, uh, the supreme oranges. And so 
this is one of my favorite techniques we're going to be teaching tonight, or I'm going to be teaching tonight, is supreming an orange. Who does this? Does anyone supreme their oranges? Does anyone know what I'm saying when I say supreme oranges? Okay, let's start there. Supremed orange is like when you peel everything off of it and you cut out just the glorious little juicy segments and you leave all the pith and all the membrane and everything behind. Okay, so we're on the same page of what a supremed orange is, right? Okay. Does anybody supreme their oranges? No. Okay. Um, look, you get a good orange, you peel it, you eat it, that navel is going to be delicious. It's going to be delicious. You peel it with a knife, you get all the pith and the white off of it, and then you cut the segments out so you don't have any of the like, connective membrane. Change your life. Change your life. It's glorious looking on a plate. It's a glorious tasting in your face. It is absolutely night and day delicious. The only thing that ever lets you down on an orange is all the connecty stuff, all the dry stuff. So if you can get that out of the equation, all you have those beautiful, juicy, like little segments. So you all are going to learn how to do this today. Orange. I remember, I told you, remember the pineapple, right? We're going to take the top off so you can see the segments. We're going to take the bottom off. And then we're going to stand it up. And just like we did with our pineapple, we're going to go around the orange and peel it. And if you leave any of the white stuff on anywhere, don't stress. You can always go back and kind of clean that up as you go. But you want to go deep enough in so you're taking all of the peel off and all of the white off. All I want to see is beautiful, clean orange underneath. Okay? And it's usually easier to do the top and not the bottom. The bottom you might miss up, so like you can flip it over, go back, and kind of clean it off. But just right there, right? So no white, no peels, no nothing. We just got clean orange. You can do this next part on your table if you want to. You can also do it in your hand if you're feeling comfortable. A big knife actually does make it a little easier because it's longer. But a short knife, if you feel safer with that, like a paring knife or something, that's fine. And grab yourself a little bowl. Clean your, your board first because you're me and it's driving you crazy. And then, can you see the lines? Like I've got a line here and a line here, right? What I'm talking about, like one here and one here. So we want to cut in an angle between those. So you take your knife and you angle it. It's not straight up and down, it's angle. You're kind of following down to the middle of the orange because the middle goes down like into a triangle. So you go in one side, go over to the other line and go in at an angle. And then your little segment comes right out. I'm going to move my bowl so you can see it a little better. So in one side, in the other side, little segment comes right out. And this is how you get rid of any of the like, any of that membrane, the connective stuff, which has done a beautiful job holding this beautiful orange together so it can get to our door. But it's not the most enjoyable for like the eating. So this gets the segments out, and then we're not going to waste the juice. We're still going to take the juice and squeeze all of it out of here over the top of the oranges. But now you just got all that beautiful juicy segments and none of the, none of the other bits. Okay. So you just get these beautiful little guys just like that. And then you can take this and you can squeeze it. A ton of juice comes out. And use it for all kinds of stuff, or you can just put it over your top. But I'm telling you, you do this a couple of times, fancy salad, celebration, great. Late night snack, you want a gorgeous orange, great. It makes, it makes a delicious orange like 10 times better, I'm telling you. Beautiful segments, our crushed nuts, we've got our salad greens, everything ready for the salad. Let's go back and check out our curry. So. Are you all ready for this? I think so. Everyone's got, I got everyone's attention. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, 
beautifully cooked chicken. At this point, it's braised down, it's tender, it's gonna be kind of falling apart. Our pineapple has softened really nicely. We haven't reduced down or lost a lot of our liquid. Looks like just a really beautiful brothy curry. I'm gonna give mine a little taste. And I'm also gonna be adding in um, my snap peas. Now we didn't add these in before because again, they would have gone, we're celebrating freshness here. Beautiful colors, right, with our oranges. If you put in your snap peas earlier than this, what's gonna happen is they're just gonna kinda go like brown and gray and they're gonna get way too soft. So putting them in now, it's gonna allow them to keep their color and we're just gonna barely cook them, all right? So just kinda nestle them in. And we're gonna check our broth, check our curry. Oh, you all. One, it's delicious. Two, I'm on the edge of regretting my curry, my chili powder decision, but I, I don't. I'm still, I'm still on board. Tastes phenomenal. Um, you got the sweetness from the pineapple and a little bit of the sweetness and acidity from the tomatoes. Um, you got all the spices and everything in there. It's absolutely great. I'm going to pop the lid on just for a couple minutes. We're going to let those green beans just get nice, bright green. Let's plate up. Should we put our salad together, get everything ready to go? Let's plate some food, y'all. So for the recipe, you can plate this up, this curry, with any sort of rice that you want. Um, you can use uh, black forbidden rice, which is really beautiful. That was in the recipe. I had some brown rice today that I wanted to cook. I wanted a little bit of like that kind of chewiness and that texture. But whatever rice you have, I mean, what is curry? In my opinion, what's curry without some sort of noodle or some sort of rice, right? So for me, a little bit of rice down on the bottom of the bowl. And I... I'm a big fan, I don't know if everyone does this, but I'm a really big fan of basically plating it a little bit to the side. I like being able to see that you have the rice in there and then the curry over on the other side. And then you can kind of like mix it up. I treat, I treat rice in some ways as like with curries almost as a, as a serving utensil. Like I like taking some of my curry and like mixing it into the rice and then like eating it in one bite. Um, so I always like to plate mine a little bit on the side. Once our green beans are nice and green, we're gonna be Spooning it out here, and we're gonna put a little bit of fresh cilantro over the top. And for our salad, just to serve it up, we're gonna to top some of our beautiful deluxe mixed nuts all over the top. So, y'all, I just put a little bit of, I put my radishes around the top, I'll show you here. I put the radishes around the top, a little bit of the, little bit of the nuts, a little bit of the scallions. Um, even salad needs a little bit of seasoning because even though we put it in the dressing all this other stuff uh, is not so a little sprinkling salt just that it'll fall through the whole salad and if you wanted to toss this all together you could some some salads I like tossing together um, beforehand but then somewhere I'm like some of the toppings are these beautiful little pieces I want to present them just like this it'll get mixed up just fine as you're tossing it um, so a little sprinkle of salt over the top all of our little beautiful segments of orange and then, last but not least, this game-changing, life-changing ginger and citrus salad dressing. When you're dressing a salad, the best way to do it, whether it's serving it in a big bowl like this or tossing it and then putting it on a small, is do you see what I'm doing? How I'm just going around the edges? If you pour it all over the top, and you can put a little over the top just so it looks pretty, but if you pour everything all over the top, it soaks into the greens and you end up with really soggy greens. If you dress around the edge of the bowl, as you're picking it up, turning in it, grabbing it, like serving it, it's naturally gonna pick a little bit of dressing up from the side of the bowl. You're gonna have a perfectly dressed salad without wilted greens. So that is our beautiful orange and ginger salad. Let's check out our curry situation. Oh, this looks so good. So I want to show you real quick. You see just how bright green the snap peas are, right? So they're barely cooked through, just tender a little bit. Going to get our curry liquid, pineapple, tomato, all of our different veggies. <clears throat> that chili powder is getting me tonight, y'all. Need a glass of water. Just beautiful colors. 
grab yourself one nice piece of chicken thigh, or maybe two if this is only for two people, whatever works for you. And then make sure you get plenty of the liquid down on the bottom. It smells amazing. A little bit of fresh cilantro on the top. You could tear these up, you could chop them. In a dish like this, again, it's a celebration. We want colors. I just want it over the top, something like that. You all, this is our pineapple chicken curry and our beautiful orange and ginger salad. It's a new year. Let's hit it up with some fresh flavors, y'all. Doesn't get much better than this. Celebrating amazing produce, um, amazing products like the mixed nuts. Just, it is so much flavor, such incredible ingredients, and it's this bright, fresh, healthy, vibrant, exciting meal. This is gorgeous. I know you get to see mine. I don't always get to see yours. Um, so please, 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 please. We've got a special hashtag working with, uh, with Harry and David. So tag us at with homemade at Harry and David, but we also have uh, homemade with Harry and David. Thank you for cooking along with us. Uh, always a pleasure to be able to do that. I hope you enjoy this dish, but uh, I just want to thank Harry and David for having, having this class. Unbelievable. It's as a chef, it's a dream to work with world-class ingredients. So to be able to work with these, uh, these amazing products in front of me here tonight has been fantastic. And to share it with all of you, my homemade family, then I'm going to say goodbye. Good night, y'all. We'll see you at our next class. Until we cook again, enjoy your kitchens, enjoy your food, and have a great night. All right? Bye, y'all.